Hey everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> so today uh, I'm going to make a quick video about the Unistrut based uh, mounting system for the solar panel array at 329 Hancock Street. And I just want to start by uh, telling everybody it's been about two months since I worked on the project, but I finally uh, was able to sit down and put a Unistrut order together. Um, Unistrut by Cooper B Line as opposed to TNB, which is the most co common brand out there, or uh, Unistrut by Atcor. Focus isn't going to work. Uh, three of the different manufacturers who make the stuff that you see for uh, conduit and electrical and piping fittings, but it also has lots of multifunctional purposes, as you can tell by, uh, of course, solar um, and all of these various fittings that you can use to basically solve any problem that you might ever have doing anything, um, such as a Swiss pocket knife of construction. Today we're going to focus on one component for unit struts looks like this, which is the mid-span clamp for locking down two, uh, two solar panels. You can see the mouse here. It's used in between solar panels to lock them down, and there's a matching end clamp like that. And this is off the, uh, the, uh, let's see, what makes this? Burndy Wiley Advanced Renewable Energy WEE Beep. So today we're going to build this, and basically what this is is the solar panels here, and then there's a left, right, um, Unistrut, one inch right there, and we're going to skip this piece here. But basically we're going to directly connect like 90 degree pivot bends here, here, and here, and then we're going to use this telescoping version of the strut with a gravity well to lock in place, and we can basically accomplish any angle at that point. Um, and then. Um, so this is going to be um, a special version of a galvanized uh, piece of Unistrut, and this is in this piece right here. The these roof mount panels are optional, but this piece right here will be uh, fiberglass. It'll be a carbon fiber substitute. Um, so this will all be essentially metal except for this piece right here, and then we'll ground it out properly using the uh, setting. So let's see if I can find a picture of what this should look like when it's done should look something like this, and then we'll invent a mounting situation for our roof when the time comes. Of course, it'll be different on 329 Hancock, but you can see all the panels lined up here on the Unistrut. They're using the 2-inch Unistrut. We'll be using the 1-inch. Um, so, basically, if I spin around here, i got my family room torn apart. You can see my hydroponics project is up going on up there. Everything lined up, and I've got uh, two panels set up here, and you can see I've already attached some of the strut. Um, I'll, I'll bring this down in a second um, and show you what we're, what we're doing, what we're aiming for here. And uh, this is the green plated, green galvanized, uh, hazardous environment outdoor rated uh, strut from the Cooper B line. And here are a few more pieces right here um, that I've specially set up. So, bring this down gently. So, just the two of them, because they're five feet by three feet, and that'll basically fill up my family room. There's four of them total in this project, but as you can see, here are the clamps locking in place, and it is a very, very, very tight fitting. And now, I know, in, in general, that doesn't work, because you would think that you would need to lock it onto something um, and clamp around it, but believe me, this crush compression here is as tight as you could possibly get. Now, I didn't, I wasn't smart enough to, or we had some trouble ordering, and I got, I got to give Beeline um, not very many props for their ordering guide. I wasn't able to get the end pieces or proper, or orderly properly through a gray bar. You can see I'm just clamping down to a small piece of 2x4 for this experiment, a proof of concept. Um, but believe me, I used a, it's probably a torque reading in the manual, I probably should check it, but I used a impact tool, and it had no noticeable negligible impact on the actual carbon fiber frame on the panel itself. Um, and I torqued that down, and as you can see, they were perfectly happy freestanding there. So there they are, and that's how that works. And when the time comes, we'll either do two rows of these, or we'll do a four wide, and we'll merge the, uh, the strut together. You can see the strut right here. One inch thick stuff, so let me scan that back up real quick. Ways 
about 300 pounds on its own accord. So, and then what I've built here is kind of, as you can see here, I've got that fiberglass strut, which is incredibly light and just as powerful. Um, and I'll, I'll send some follow-up notes on the video about um, T and B making that. But what I've done is I've essentially modeled in, a, in, a, in an 8-inch wide version what I'm going to do with the 10-foot uh, one behind me. But essentially I've taken this, presume that simulate this piece of strut here as the bottom piece right here. Um, and you can see these 90 degree pivot angles I've bolted onto there haphazardly a little bit at this point. I'm using the one quarter inch washers and bolts. I should be using three eighths, but when I go to actually mount this in a second, I will. That will simulate the front and can pivot eh, for the most part at that angle, giving sufficient clearance between this surface and the ground to be this to be this six inches right here for this test, otherwise I'll elevate it. And then what I've got is I got this uh, specially ordered like uh, um, interwoven as you can tell um, strut that's uh, designed to provide that angle and then I've got the end of that bolted to that another piece to simulate and essentially I can pick this up and reach that optimal 30 to 40 degree angle and then watch I can extend that out as I need to in order to reach the accommodating angle and then back down and that's it it doesn't look very, very pretty, but in principle, it will work, and it will work. And, and the, import, the reason I chose this carbon fiber here is because if it's sitting on the roof system, temporary or permanent, it's not going to be as susceptible to corrosion or, or exposure to direct uh, extended, extended moisture. Obviously, drainage will be a big issue in planning when we get it up there. But uh, merging the, uh, the fiberglass to the, to the metal, to the steel, not a problem. And then, of course, I got my Takeda cordless bandsaw. It was the only real tool I really needed for this project and the impactor. Um, and, uh, oh, and a little bit of calculus to calculate the rise over run requirements and the overlap for the length on the, uh, on the Y run um, for the vertical elevation. So that was easy, and I got that sitting around here. And that's it. So we're going to build it. I'm going to attach this. Now, yeah, unfortunately, I have to take this all apart in order to attach it to a wide version of that. But I should be able to build a modular frame that is uh, able to be angled you know, throughout the year between 30 and 40 degrees to follow the sun um, in, the southern in the southern sky over Pittsburgh. And uh, that's about it. So I'm trying to think. Is there anything else I need? Nope. I'll take another video and show you some pictures of this when it's done, like in action. But the last thing to do will probably be to, you know, connect the uh, connect my DC cables here and put, run them into a watertight junction box, um, figure out a cable routing issue, and then I'll show you some of the individual components for merging two pieces of strut together, um, providing a stable angle. Because when we get up on that roof, I don't know if I'm going to be providing these left, right, or up, down. But interesting. Uh, anyway, that's how you spend half of a Saturday. And that is how you teach yourself how to use uh, the strut solution. So I imagine when we're doing 329 Hancock Street, it'll come in handy a lot. Anyway, take it easy, guys. See you soon.